Welcome to Budget Requests and their Review. The basic building block in budgeting is the budget request in its review. This module will outline the roles of the Chief Executive and Program Manager and the respective roles in making and reviewing budget requests. Everything starts with the Chief Executive of the organization. That person sets the tone and direction of the budgeting process. The reason is that budgeting happens in a context and it takes someone at the top to have an overall view of things and how all parts of the organization fit together. This top executive does not dictate every detail of the entire process. Instead, the executive is more like a conductor of an orchestra, making sure that all the various skill positions, like musicians, work on the, the agreed upon script to produce beautiful music. What I'm calling the executive may have a different formal title than chief executive with titles ranging from Minister, Executive Director, Clinic Director, Lab Director, or some other title. The point is not the title, but the overall responsibility. In contrast to the Chief Executive is the Program Manager. Usually there are several Program Managers or Department Heads or Unit Managers who are responsible for particular budget units that are under the overall responsibility of the Chief Executive. A program manager is the expert on the services performed by that unit, how all the parts fit together, and what it takes in terms of money to achieve the desired results. This substantive expertise allows the program manager to make an effective advocate for a budget for that particular function. A program manager is able to translate general ideas about a service into detailed cost estimates and work plans but the individual budget requests go back to the chief executive, who has to review each request by balancing the competing needs and demands of the organization as a whole. Trade-offs are required. The organization is unlikely to be able to do everything desired. Accordingly, the chief executive has to resolve the differences and produce a coherent overall budget that breaks even. The chief executive has to set the guidelines for the budget. It starts with the short-range administrative policies and goals for the upcoming budget year. What are the underlying factors that will drive budgeting this year? Is there much change expected in the target client group? Is it more or less than last year? Are there competing options for the types of services we provide? Perhaps a new clinic in the area? Or is there more resistance in the community to the type of care we, pro we provide? Are potential clients less able to pay fees for service? And how do these trends and context concerns translate into services to be provided? Will it require more or less staff than before? Are services cutbacks or additions needed? Should we think of new ways to do the same thing? These are just some of the budget context questions that the chief executive must consider in providing budget guidelines. Budget guidelines also need to address specific assumptions, such as uniform inflation expectations, pay changes to be allowed, and pricing policy. By giving such guidance, it avoids having each budget unit use different assumptions about gasoline prices, inflation rate, pay changes, and revenue fee increases. It's best to have all of these types of issues set at the beginning so that every budget request is built on a common set of assumptions. The executive should provide comparative information on the prior budget and its status today. Identifying the base budget usually helps. The base budget is the amount of money required to keep service levels flat during the following year. It means no increases or decreases in services. It also doesn't usually include any one-time requested items such as a new vehicle or other capital equipment. Rather, the base budget is what it would take to continue another year without much change. A uniform budget request form provides consistency in how program managers submit their requests. A budget calendar provides the due dates to make sure that the entire process is concluded before the new budget year starts. Reporting to the chief executive are one or more program managers or unit heads. A program manager is the expert on the services performed by that unit. They know how all the parts fit together. 
and what it takes in terms of money to achieve the desired results. Work planning then requires clarity on the functions assigned and a strong commitment to continuing improvements in the services offered. Are there other services that should be provided to help achieve the assigned functions? Of the existing services, are there alternative means for providing them, such as different delivery methods or different staffing requirements that would promote more effective services? Good budgeting requires looking at such things with a fresh point of view, not constrained by statements such as, that's the way we've always done it. In drafting a budget request for money for the next year, the program manager has to think about how to justify every part of it. Does the request support the mission and goals of the overall organization and that particular program? Does it meet all the laws or contractual mandates that govern the program? If government money is being used, that money can only be spent for the allowed purposes. The same general restrictions often apply to donor money. Every budget request has to be accurate. Numbers are precise. The spending plan has to be realistic, as should any, any revenue plan. All assumptions that drive the numbers should be disclosed to make it easier for budget reviews to test the assumptions. To the degree that the unit has operational concerns or problems, the budget request should address the improvements that will be made and the implications for the budget. For example, perhaps blood samples have gone bad due to time or temperature. Does the new budget address how the handling procedures will change through reassignment of staff? Or perhaps the purchase of a new temperature-controlled device? How does the budget request meet expected demand or needs? Does the budget request offer improvements in efficiency or savings? For instance, in preparing the budget, did the program manager consider a less expensive but equally accurate HIV testing method? How does the budget request help avoid future budgetary problems? For instance, does it consider replacing equipment at the end of its useful life, instead of waiting too long and having to pay more for higher maintenance costs than a new piece of equipment would have cost? Another example is how a budget request might deal with ongoing staffing problems, such as high turnover of workers. Is the solution to pay them more? To cross-train employees? To simplify the tasks? or maybe to enhance the work environment. A budget request form could take many different looks. Here's one. It's for a budget year, or fiscal year, that runs from January 1, 2017 through December 31, 2017. It's a request form that would be filled in several months ahead of the end of the prior year, perhaps around mid-year 2016 well ahead of when it would have to be approved in time for the first day of January. In another course module, we talk about a chart of accounts, which is the numbering system for all transactions. This example shows that it's for the central laboratory, which is department number 01, in accounting fund 1101. The budget request is for 2017, with comparative data from 2014 actuals, 2015 actuals, the amended budget for 2016, the year to date in 2016, and a draft base budget for 2017. This history can assist the department in forming its budget request for 2017. Each of the budget categories have a unique code number as well, with lab supplies coded as 5311. Again, the base budget is the amount of money required to keep service levels flat during the upcoming year. It's merely a guide for budget planning. The program manager has to consider what changes, if any, are needed and can be justified as outlined on the prior slide. There are fill-in-the-blank spaces for the request for each category of spending in 2017. Usually, there are supplemental sheets that require the program manager to write or outline the justification for the numbers, including reasons for staying with the base budget or making changes to it. If the budget request for the new budget year 
includes a proposal for new programs or services, it makes sense that the request has to be complete and well thought out. A new service may require the use of existing fixed costs, such as the underused room next door, but it may also require one-time purchases such as new equipment that could last several years, thereby a fixed cost for future years. There are likely to be variable costs, such as supplies, that will increase or decrease depending upon the number of patients. As a result, the new program request has to be based on a solid estimate of the demand for the program, meaning the expected number of patients to be served in the first year. It's not acceptable to put in for a new service and overlook how it might push costs elsewhere in the organization. Therefore, the new service proposal should identify all direct costs, such as staffing and supplies, but also any indirect costs, such as new burdens on the accounting office or the front intake unit. Essentially then, a budget request for a new program has to address the impact on the operating budget. It needs to take into account the number of employees required and the related salaries, the equipment and supplies required, and all other spending necessary to provide the services. And as just stated, you have to consider the impact on other parts of the organization and be sure to inform them of any requests that may impact their budget. An example of a new program would be specimen pickup and transportation services to the regional laboratory for testing. The direct costs would include the purchase price for a motorcycle, a cooler to preserve specimen, gas for the motorcycle based on the expected miles driven, maintenance on the motorcycle to keep it in working order, the wages for a driver, and a cell phone for the driver. Indirect costs would include a motorcycle storage space in the existing building and the ongoing supervision of the driver. Program managers submit their budgets to the chief executive for review and approval. The executive reviews each budget request and seeks positive answers to these types of questions. Do the numbers add up? After all, it is a budget, so accuracy matters. Is the justification consistent with the numbers? Numbers tell only part of the story, and it's assumed the program manager is a strong advocate for the submitted budget, but is it well justified? Does it address our mission or strategic plan, the initial budget guidance? Does it utilize our existing skill set or do we have to obtain new expertise or hire that expert? Does it address a client need or demand? These assumptions have to be spelled out. Is the price competitive with other options in the marketplace or community? The service may be nice to offer, but if it's costly and no one will pay for it, not even the government or donors, as a result it might not be doable. Any pricing of services has to be realistic. Is the risk consistent with the reward? This is a subjective assessment that the chief executive has to weigh carefully. Just because a proposed new service is low risk and low return does not mean it ought to be neglected, nor does a high risk but high return program. Each program has to be considered on its own merit.